I'm going to take this ball and paddle game, this pong style game from another video and work through the process of adding a second ball and hopefully making it work. And I didn't really plan this out, so I'm kind of winging it. Uh, the first thing I want to do is shrink this so we can really focus on the code a little more. And then I'm going to get rid of this score because it's big and kind of in the way. So just for now, um, let's see, we'll find the spot where the score is written on the screen and we will just comment that out. So I'm just going to put uh, forward slash on those. So they're still there. I can bring them back later. Uh, but now they're not really in our way. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is make another ball. So the code to make the first ball is right here. I'm just going to highlight those and do control C to copy. And then come down below it and paste them in again. And I'm going to be really creative here and call these ball two. I want it to be the same size. And for now, it's got the same velocity. And we might as well make another animation. So I'm going to duplicate this one and call this ball two. And maybe just change the color so I can tell which which ball is giving me trouble in my troubleshooting. So here's ball two. It's going to get that color. And now let's see what's happening. Oh, notice that was very odd. I'm only seeing one of them at a time. I don't really know what's going on there. Um, oh, look, they're in the same location. So uh, because I copied that, they're in the same spot. So I'm going to make this one start in the bottom right hand corner. And this one start in the top left hand corner. So it's at 100, 100, roughly here. And the other one's going to start roughly here. And so now you can see that that's working. OK, now I'm going to make them go in opposite directions. So see how this one is going right? It's x velocity, so it's going right at 5 pixels per second. And it's y velocity, it's going down at 5 pixels per second. Uh, I'm going to make this other ball go in the opposite direction, so it's going to have negatives. So now they should be flying towards each other. OK, that's cool. So they don't have any interactivity yet. We can do that in just a second. Uh, but first, we want to make them bounce the same way. So I'm going to come down here. And ooh, you know what? We need to control their velocity separately. Uh, so uh, I'm going to take these two DXs, which was my, um, my direction, essentially my velocity for each one. And I'm going to copy those and make a duplicate of those as well. So I'll do a DX2. That was my mouse scrolling down the keyboard. And that's for ball two. We'll do a DY2 for ball two. OK. Uh, now this controls what happens if the ball goes off the screen left and right. And this one controls what happens if the ball goes off the top of the screen. Uh, so we'll copy both of those, paste them, and we'll just change all these to ball two. We'll change these to DX2. Okay, so now um, the red ball should be interacting with the corners. Oh, but it's not. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got it. Uh, so right here is where we... Okay, so the thing I just did changes the value of dx and dy. And then down here is where I set the velocity of the ball to that thing. So... Uh, I need to duplicate and copy these two lines as well. Uh, this may not be the most efficient way to do this, but I think it's going to work. All right, so now they don't interact with each other, but it appears that they do interact with the corners, as we would expect. Uh, now it doesn't spawn, so um, this will make it so if it goes off the bottom, 
it reappears out of the top. So we'll copy that one as well. And then what we're going to do in just a little bit is think about, there we go, is to think how it needs to interact with the paddle. And then the last thing we'll do is how it interacts with the other ball, because that's the part I don't really know what I'm going to do. So first, uh, how does it interact with the paddle? That would be here. I'll copy that one and paste it. If ball two is touching the paddle, then change the Y velocity. All right, now I'm going to try to play this, and I'm only really concerned with the red one here. Okay, so that's working. I'm not going to check the score because I took the score off at the very beginning of this. I don't especially care. Okay, uh, yeah, that looks good. So now we need to figure out how to make these balls deal with each other. So uh, my first thought, and I tried this and it didn't work a minute ago, but I'm going to do it here anyway, is somewhere inside this loop, might as well do it at the bottom so I know where I'm at, uh, to just set them to bounce off of each other. So let's do that and then we'll look at why it doesn't work. So we'll just set ball to bounce off ball two. Let's try that. Uh, so they do bounce off of each other, but not in the way that you want them to. So what's happening there is it's that code is working, but then you still have all these velocities. Um, so uh, that's not going to work. So then I thought uh, we could do an if they're touching. So let's try that out and see what happens. Okay, so if ball one is touching ball two, then we would want to change their velocities so that they go in the other direction. So uh, let's just experiment a little bit. Um, we'll take this one. Oh wait, the original ones didn't have a one in them. Okay. Uh, what did I do? We can't figure out what ball. Oh yeah, ball one isn't called ball one. It's just called ball. Sorry about that. Okay. So they're acting a little bit wonky there. So what is happening? That is weird. Like they just keep, oh, because they're touching. Yeah. All right, after eight minutes, I've seen the folly of my ways and I've made a lot of changes, which make me kind of think about starting this video over, but I'm just gonna leave it alone. The first thing I wanna talk about is that I completely got rid of dx, dy, dx2, and dy2. They're not necessary if you're going to use this method, so I just simplified. So everywhere before that I had dx equals negative dx, I've just simplified, and I'll show you what that looks like now. Uh, instead, I just said uh, set my initial velocities, right? Um, this is just my paddle, which I didn't change any. And then I just used all these is touching. If the ball is touching the paddle, just bounce off the paddle and change the score. Same thing for ball two here. Uh, and then I said, if the ball goes off the bottom of the screen, um, just move it back to the top. So that part didn't change and I add one to the score. So that's fine. Now here's the part that's new. Uh, well, I need to explain edge sprites. So I added this element here that says create edge sprites. So what that does is creates an invisible top edge, right edge, bottom edge, and left edge. Uh, here's the block, and you can see the documentation here if you click see examples. Uh, but all you have to do is drag it over up near the top where you're initializing. Then down at the bottom, 
I said uh, ball bounce off edges and ball two bounce off edges. So that means it's going to bounce off the entire group. And then I had to do a little experimenting with uh, the balls bouncing off of each other, but it seems like the best method is instead of using bounce off, which makes them have that weird uh, super bounce, I guess, is to just put, say, ball bounce against ball two, and then just do it in reverse. Ball two bounce against ball. And as you can see over there on the left, let me make this a little bigger, that seems to kind of do what we want. Now I'm glitching. Oh. Let's reset. They bounce off each other in a predictable way. They bounce off the paddle without any trouble, and now I'll let them both go by. They're respawning at the top without changing velocity, so I think that's it. The only thing left to think about is how many I could get bouncing on here at, at one time. So here's 102 of them. That's just something to leave you with. Have fun.